Hey guys, what's up? It's Finch here. We're, um, we're back with a bit of a different video here. So we're going to be ranking all the Pokemon in the, um, the DLC um, Isle of Armor. So for those of you that don't know, um, DLC is basically how Nintendo Game Freak are trying to kind of keep us on edge and make their money. So they're releasing Pokemon in like waves. There's going to be one here. There's another, I believe, in either like September or November. I think November, yeah. This is DLC 1. So I took all the fully evolved Pokemon in Chansey. Um, I didn't include Magneton or Scyther. I know both are like viable in lower tiers, but um, I didn't want to too many Pokemon. It's already a long enough video. Um, I honestly, if I could do it all over again, I probably wouldn't include Emolga and Dedenne, and I would include Magneton and Scyther, but just know that I'd put both of them roughly in D tier. So before I go through my Pokemon one by one, let me explain what I'm doing here. S tier is gonna be Pokemon that are basically strong, metagame defining OU Pokemon, um, could even be seen in S tier or maybe like A plus tier in OU. Um, but I am catering a bit to lower tiers as well in this video. So A tier is gonna consist of Pokemon that are definitely going to be OU and probably like consistently used in OU. Like, so at least like A minus or B plus tier in OU or above. B tier is gonna consist of Pokemon that are viable in OU, but probably gonna be more common in lower tiers. Um, C tier is gonna consist of Pokemon that are probably not viable in OU, but might be viable in UU or predominantly seen in RU. D tier is going to be mostly reserved for like NU Pokemon or Pokemon that just have no chance of ever seeing it in OU. And F tier, just Pokemon that are bottom dollars, might not even be that great in tiers like um, PU or NU. So yeah, without further ado, we're going to start this off alphabetically, that's what I tried to do. So the first Pokemon we have is Azumarill. I've never actually did one of these things, but we're going to place it in, um, it's going to be near the top of B tier. So I think it's going to be viable in OU. Um, but it's going to be kind of fringe. There are things going to be around like Slowbro, Toxapex, Tangrowth, which are going to be able to wall the Choice Bandit set, or at least keep it at bay. Skarmory as well. Belly Drum sets are going to be cool, but there's still faster Pokemon like Keldeo, more importantly Dragapult, um, Hydreigon, um, Rotom Wash, you know, potentially even Seismitoad, Kingdra that we're going to see, Starmie, that could be able to potentially revenge kill it. Yeah, um... You know what? I'm going to say maybe we're going to put it in low A. We could put it, you know, we're going to leave it at top of B right now, but yeah, it's kind of fringe. I think it's going to be OU by usage, just barely. I think it really depends if the belly drum set takes off or not. Um, I don't know what common counterplay is going to be to it, honestly. I, I see things like Dragapult and Hydreigon, they should be able to do it, um, but pressuring it's important, but it also should be able to get enough free turns that, you know what? Maybe I'm going to say lower A. Okay, we're going to put it at the bottom of A. So then there's Blissey. Blissey is definitely not going to be OU just because Chansey is bound to be better. Um, especially without like trapping in the metagame. Yeah, there's like no need to run Chansey. I know knockoff is still pretty common, but Chansey is Chansey after all. Um, the, the gains in bulk is huge. Um, Blissey is definitely going to be good in UU though. So I'm going to put it in squarely in the middle of, U, in, of B rank. And on top of that, I'm moving Chansey to A rank and I'm going to put it ahead of Azumarill because Chansey is just phenomenal. It's been one of the best OU Pokemon. I mean, you've seen me use it a million times if you've been on my channel or watched my games for a long time. And SMOU. Even or else you not so much in black white, but yeah, um, Chansey is definitely a great Pokemon, and it's gonna thrive in this meta game, this generation for sure. Just given the sheer bulk and utility, that was also worth noting that the changes that both these Pokemon experience, both Chansey and Blissey, they both can teleport, and that's really cool in my eyes. Um, sorry, just had to change something right there. Dendene though, that's gonna be F tier. I've just never seen it of much use, even in like a PU. Maybe it's good in the ZU. I don't know, but I'm not really gonna stick around and find out in um, tiers below PU. And I don't really see any niche for it besides that. So yeah, um, Dragology is a really cool Pokemon. Um, I could potentially see it in low C, but really it's kind of a dedicated RU Pokemon. Um, I could see it probably being viable in UU this generation, um, but historically it's been RU. It's even had stints in NU where it's got banned, but yeah. Um, Dredigon, however, I rank is just a little above it. So I'm gonna put it in low C. It's probably gonna end up Closer to D rank, maybe, but yeah, um, Dredigon, I just use a step above it. It has a ton of useful resistances. Last generation, it settled in NU, but honestly, it was super top tier in NU. And I think that Mold Breaker is really great this generation, um, given that Zatu is pretty solid in lower tiers with Teleport. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to settle in UURU Zatu wise, but Dredigon itself is great. Um, unfortunately, though, it is still pretty limited and it can't do a ton. And losing Z moves kind of hurts its niche. In fact, I'm going to actually put it right in front of Dragal Dragology in D rank. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. I haven't really did any preparation for this, just kind of like spur of the moment thoughts. Um, I wish I had more Pokemon to rank, honestly, in 28 now that I'm looking at it, but it's fine. Um, Executor, I'm gonna actually put it behind both of these guys in D rank. Um, it's just not really great at anything, unfortunately. 
It has sleep and it has a lot of special attack, which is cool, but it's really frail in special end and has not the best typing defensively as well. And it's not quick enough to write Polython things off. So it's probably gonna be like NU viable, like it has been on and off the last couple generations, but not really worthwhile and tiers above that. We saw usage in generation one and two and overused, but yeah, that's really it. Unfortunately, Executor, I don't see it gaining much. Um, unless it gets a move I don't know about, we'll have to find out, but um, yeah, no. Um, things that did gain moves, Starmie actually is teleport. It always had that, but that's important for it. So is Magnezone. So things I didn't know before yesterday, there are other moves, of course, that are gonna be gained, distributed that we don't know about. What's gonna be fun about this video is in a week when DLC is out and we kind of know more, maybe two weeks once the metagame settled a little bit and the World Cup has actually started by then. So we know what people are using. It's actually gonna be cool to see like what's ranked like high and low relative to this. I might actually make like this a before and then do an after video as well. Just food for thought. Beyond Molga, I rank a little above the Dene, but um not by much. It's just kind of staying by an F tier. Um okay, next off is Xplot. I don't really want to talk much about Amolga or the Dene. They're just garbage Pokemon. I don't really know a ton about them, honestly. They're not even viable in any which tier I play a ton of, so yeah. Xplode, um, I think it's above Executor just because Boom Burst and that coverage is really cool. Boom Burst in particular. It's never going to see OU unless it's like on some like meme like team with like screens and shit. But um, it's really nice in like RU and U sometimes. Um, actually, it's broken in NU before in prior generation. Um, yeah, Boom Burst is just really strong off stab. So definitely worth noting. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Um, next up. I'm gonna pause and get some water because that was a rough cough. <laughs> One second, guys. All right, we're um, back. Test, yeah, we're good, okay. Um, so yeah, unfortunately I haven't really hit many like top tier OU Pokemon yet. Fun is pretty quickly, but um, the next Pokemon we got is Golduck, which unfortunately is probably a step below even thing like um, Executor. I'm gonna put it at the top of F. We could see it in low D if there's a surge of like setup manual rain teams in say NU or RU even. But the issue is that Polytoad's almost definitely gonna be banned from UU. So it's not gonna happen. <laughs> um, yeah. Speak of Polytoad though, it's gonna come up eventually, so it's a spoiler alert. Kangaskhan's the next one, and Kangaskhan's a pretty solid Pokemon. I'm actually gonna put it, um, eh. I put it ahead of Executor, behind Explod. It's a better Pokemon, but Boom Burst just makes Explod so good. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Fake God sets in lower tier is solid. Um, with like Double Edge, Earthquake, you know, Power Up Punch, Sucker Punch, etc. cetera. It can also run like Wish sets and Whirlpool sets and all sorts of utility. It's got a great move pool. And it's just a really cool Pokemon. Actually, one of my favorite designs, Pokemon from Gen 1. But yeah, unfortunately, it's still a lower tier dweller. Finally, we're gonna get to Kingdra. I'm gonna put Kingdra in, um, I put Kingdra, just behind Blissey. Last generation, I believe, was like RUBL or ended up in RU. I think it was RUBL, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's kind of UU Pokemon. It's going to be used on OU Rain now. You know, it's going to be more viable on OU than Blissey, but it's not going to be more viable on UU than Blissey. But yeah, okay, we'll put it right ahead of it just because I guess we're doing like OU viability is like the main like priority, but yeah, just I guess that's worth noting. Um, it's going to be seen on some Rain teams in OU, probably not all of them because there's like other things like Dreadnought and Barascuda that take up some competition, but yeah, I am really can go either way. Um, it's probably gonna be nice in UU, maybe RU though, um, for sure. Next up we have Crocodile. Um, Crocodile is a really cool Pokemon. It's one that I think will have fringe viability in OU, from, like Stealth Rock Taunt, Knock Off, Bulk Up Power Trip sets or Choice sets, I guess, but without Pursuit, it loses a ton of viability. So personally, I'm gonna put it like right here. Um, yeah, in front of, because again, I think it's gonna have like, you know what, actually I'll put it, yeah, I'll put it ahead of Blissey, because it probably might be better than Blissey in UU too because it's able to check a ton of things as well. Um, and Intimidate's always great. And on top of that, it gained access to close combat, which is gonna help it a lot in my eyes. So yeah, be sure to stay alert of that. All right, next Pokemon, we have Luxray, one of the other shit tier electrics. This one I'm actually gonna put um, ahead of Golduck just because it might have like fringe viability with a gut set in NU or PU, especially PU. Um, not totally relying on rain, which is probably just gonna be like manual setup rain if anything, so yeah. Why the hell not? Next off, we have Lycanroc. Um, Lycanroc is definitely a pretty cool Pokemon, but um, still limited in what you do. I don't know what form it is. If this is like the OP form, then I'd put it here, but I don't think so, so I'm actually gonna put it here. Um, it gained some coverage moves, and um, yeah, I don't know what form it is. I don't know logistics, so for now, I'm just gonna put it there. Bit of a vague kind of RUNU type in my eyes. Yeah, um, C rank looking kind of barren. That sucks. Um, you know what? We're actually gonna do some changes here. We're gonna move. 
Yeah, we're gonna actually even that. Okay, that's looking a little. Oh, no, no, no. Jedi, go over here, dog. All right, that's great. So, yeah, that's good. Finally, Magnezone. Uh, definite OU Pokemon. I'm gonna put it ahead of Azumarill. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, Magnezone's just an OG Trapper. Actually, I'm gonna put it behind Azumarill just because it loses Hidden Power Fire, which sucks for Ferrothorn, but it does have Body Press and it also has Teleport. Honestly, spec sets with um, Analytic could be pretty cool um, as well. So, yeah, it definitely worth noting. Unfortunately, it's coming alongside Chansey, which can like kind of check those sets. But yeah, um, all things considered, it's it's got a ton of niche. Of course, it is limited, but it's gonna be great for things like Corviknight, for example, especially with Ferrothorn gone. So you can't like you turn out of it and then trap it. No, but yeah, um, Manchow is next. I'm gonna put it in B tier. Um, Regenerator is really good this generation, and also it finally got access to close combat. So yeah, definitely ahead of Crocodile and Kingdra and Blissey in my eyes. I honestly could see it being an OU Pokemon with close combat knockoff. You turn like kind of like um, AV sets maybe, but it's still kind of useless against Toxic and Cleft, so not super great there. Um, all right, Politoed. I'm actually gonna group it right with Kingdra. Um, kind of like fringe range options. Um, of course, it would be like the main, like the centerpiece of those range teams. But the issue with that, of course, would be that Palper is just a little bit better than it. It runs a better spec set. It could buff that, and also more physical defense and the flying typing. Although that kind of can be a, a curse as well against Stealth Rock. Um, Positive would be better for like special defensive variants, also Hypnosis and Parasong, so it's definitely going to be viable, but it's probably still going to be a second tier range setter. Um, yeah, maybe it'll see like some time in UU before it breaks the tier open like um, Palper did. Um, Alright, Polyrath is cool. I think it gained like a couple moves, in particular close combat. It might be decent with like Belly Drum, I guess, but I think Azumarill outclasses it. Ultimately, I think it's probably going to be about an RU or any Pokemon, so I'm going to put it there in C rank. Um, yeah, it does have some new options though, so it's worth exploring for sure, but ultimately, again, it's just not superb, it's just okay. So yeah, um, Scizor is next. Um, I think Scizor's gonna be real dog shit, no you. I mean, Corviknight, Hippowdon, Toxpex, a couple fire types around, Magnezone can still trap it, um, potentially. Yeah, so, um, I'm actually gonna put it in B rank right, um, right, um, B, ahead of, no, behind Manchow, yeah, um, I just don't think regular scissors is that good. Anyway, next up we have Skarmory. Um, Skarmory's hard drank. I could put it at the top of B or the bottom of A. Mag's one coming alongside it sucks, but Skarmory can run Shed Shell and it's still great. But Corviknight gives it a ton of competition, so that's a pain in the ass. Um, yo, we're moving Chansey up to S. Just putting it out there. Um, it's been done. Chansey's just that good in my eyes relative to everything else. I'm looking at the remainder of the list and yeah. Um, I'm going to put it behind Magnezone for now. And Slowbro is next. Slowbro with Teleport and Regenerator is amazing. It's going to tear up OU. I'm actually going to put it ahead of Chansey in S. Um, it's probably the best Pokemon we're getting. Um, besides maybe Heavy Duty Boots Full, but I'm actually not as high in it as you'd think because it still is walled by Chansey and Toxpex and Talonflame and, you know, Azumarill potentially and a couple of other things that we're getting as well as things in the metagame already. So, yeah, you can see, like, physical Dragapult for it as well. Anyway, um... Let's get into Starmie. Starmie actually gets teleport. You run like a bulky spin set, but it's still not doing great. You want to kind of run like 5 million things. You lose out Hidden Power Fire for Ferrothorn, which I guess was something that people use Life Orb Analytic on, but I don't see that keeping a set anyway. It's just going to be an okay spinner. Fringe viable. Probably going to be UU. I'm going to put it um, between... Yeah, I'm going to put it behind Scizor. Yep, and Scizor is probably going to not own it as hard because it's not going to pursue this generation in UU, but still can do well against it with U-Turn and tanking anyone in it. So yeah, it's cool. Next up is Talonflame. Um, Talonflame, I've used more for like an RU option. It can run, actually with boots, actually, whoa, 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 boots make it pretty good. Um, whoa, hold the phone. Um, I'm actually gonna put it, um, yeah, I think that, I think this does it justice. All right, I mean, it's still limited. It wasn't even that great in Gen 6 when it was really OU, and there are things in OU right now, like, or OU viable right now, like Rhyperior, or things in OU like Hippowdon, Toxapex, Rotom Heat, that all can do pretty well against it, among other things, like Slowbro, which we're getting. Um, but it's still, with Boots, is gonna be really good. It can trigger the ability that got nerfed, and um, yeah, it has a lot of utility options as well, so its ancestors can work too. So yeah, I see it being really good in UU, if not then very viable in OU. Actually gonna put it above Scizor in hindsight. And Mancha, you know what? Yeah, we're, we're prior to any OU viability, so we're gonna put Tonkle in there just because Boots does that well. Tangrowth is next up. We're going to put Tangrowth at the top of A. It's just that great. Yeah, um, you know what? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's warrants enough. There's not enough bulky grass types not named Ferrothorn right now. It's going to be really good at 
invalidating things like Zara Aura. Um, it's going to be a great check to some water types like Azumarill that don't run Belladrum. Yeah, and it's just another regenerate Pokemon, so it's going to be good for sure. It's just a matter of how good. Next up is Tauros. It's probably going to be solid in like NURU, but I can't really put it much above. Um, I'll put it here. I kind of want to swap with Polyrath, honestly, but Polyrath gets some new moves and Tauros isn't really getting anything. And things are only getting bulkier and bulkier while it's not getting anywhere. Anyway, Volk is next. It's going to be our last S tier Pokemon. Um, with Heavy Duty Boots, it's going to be really, really cool. As we get to 15 minute mark, we're getting close to the end of this. Yeah. Um, but it's still going to be limited because Chansey and Tox Specs and stuff. It can run right coverage moves. It can even run Roost. Um, but there's only so much it could do. It's going to need some support regardless. Um, and Heavy Duty Boots could, of course, get knocked. Um, and there's going to be common checks to it. But it's going to kind of force team building a little bit, restrict team building a little bit. So I definitely would put it in low S tier, which means that I think it can probably be like A rank in OU, for example. So I hope that helps. And. Last, before we kind of reorganize it to even out the tiers, it's going to be Zorark, which I don't think is too great. I'm actually going to put it, um, I'm going to split the two dragons with it. Yup, yup, yup. Alrighty. Um, now, yeah, I mean, Illusion's a cool ability, but it's just, it's limited. Fire types kind of dick it. The fire types being put in the generation after it. Like, it was cool, like, to tour with in, like, black, white, lower tiers. I think it was actually, like, semi-viable in UU. Not great, but never know you. Um, but ultimately, just never caught on, and then fairy types made it even harder. I think it had a couple of months of fame in RU at some point during Generation Six and Seven, but really, it just was never special. I think it might have gotten banned from one of the generations of RU at some point, even. But yeah, no, I just I can't see it ever being really above a fringe UU option. Definitely not OU viable with all the things you see right now that keep it in check. So yeah, um, I think it's that moving Blissey to C, especially with getting teleport, it's ridiculous. In fact, we're actually gonna move Blissey. Yeah, we're going to move Blissey and Crook above these two. We're going to move Talonflame up to the low OU tier. Um, I kind of want to move Scizor back, but no, it's going to be really hard to check in UU. I think this is pretty representative of how I feel, honestly. Um, but yeah, so I think that Slowbro, Chansey, and Volcona are going to be clearly OU by usage. and going to be great. Probably like A, maybe a minus tier to lowest in OU. Um, with slow having potential to really break the tier open and being like teleport regenerated is just so good. Um, yeah, and Chansey is just going to be a staple on these like fat teams for sure. Against the teleport as well, although it kind of is formal slot syndrome with that. And heavy duty boots makes Volcarona a godsend in a lot of senses, but there are some hard checks and counters to it. Next up, we have um, Tangrowth, Azumarill, Magnezone, Skarmory, Town Flame, and A rank. Um, Tangrowth is great, it can get regenerator, but Still kind of just stuck with its old tricks, which is, again, they're fine. Rocky Yama Tangrowth was great last gen. AV always has niche, but um, I wouldn't put it on, tier, on part of the top three, but I definitely think it's going to be OU. And then we get Pokemon that are probably going to be OU, but not 100%. Um, Azumarill, Magnezone, and Skarmory are those three. And they're, like, in the middle, higher part of tier A. Um, Azumarill, I think the Bellidrum set's kind of going to pop off. And Magnezone lose hidden power, but I still think it's a good enough trapper. Um, I think that Bellidrum Azumarill actually has a lot of potential to more and more I think about it. It kind of limits a lot of team construction so definitely be wary of that magnezone it's gonna be a good trapper but it does lose hidden power fire it does gain body press though so yeah interesting trade-off might make it awkward against ferrothorn but still should be able to trap things um just a matter of how useful that's gonna be then we have skarmory just you know the golden bird always gonna be kind of ou by usage and hanging around there always gonna be good on like these bulkier teams it's a spike setter it can defog it also gained access to body press which makes it less helpless against skarmory so body press and you run shed shell you can actually like beat it in the second time it'd be kind of cool um, then Talonflame, I think, is going to see a big boost in viability, despite the ability being hurt last generation. Um, Heavy Duty Boots helps it a lot, has a lot of utility, so it's kind of made for this gen. But I still think it's a pretty limited, mediocre OU Pokemon in general, so yeah, I expect it to be like B-Rank in OU, for example. Next up, we have a couple Pokemon that I think are probably all going to be like fringe viable in OU to decently viable in OU, but none of them are going to be above B-Rank. Um, and all of them are probably going to reside in UU or lower echelon of OU usage in Mian Shao, Scizor, Starmie, Blissey. Crocodile, might honestly never see Suzu you. Palitoad, which is second tier to Pelper, and Kingra, which is just a fringe range user. Yeah. Man Show with Regenerator and Close Combat over High Jump Kick. Pretty cool for sure, but just hard to see where it fits. But I think it's going to be pretty good in UU, honestly. Um, I think I'm going to move it below Scizor. And. You know what? No, I think I'm going to leave it here. Yeah. Okay. I think Scizor is better. Scizor. It's just a classic Pokemon. It's going to find ways to see some usage in OU, even if it's just like offensive sewer stance sets, trying to just break as much as they can before Toxpex comes in and says, nope, no more. 
<laughs> but yeah, also, this is going to just own harder on UU, I feel, even if Regenerator Mian Chao is going to be dope with close combat nowadays. Um, Starmie is just a classic of Pokemon, it's always going to be OU, UU type. It's been OU for generations 1 through 5, then finally fell. I think at some point Generation 6 and then stayed in UU all of Generation 7. It was actually pretty common in Generation 6 OU at points as a bulky spinner, ironically enough. But yeah, I never caught on Gen 7 OU, and now it's like full on UU there. It actually is an okay ZU move user and bulky spinner there. But yeah, I kind of see it fulfilling a similar role to this generation. Blissey, it just takes a second, second like kind of place to Chansey roll, and it would be good in OU if not for Chansey, but Chansey EV Light obviously is just superior. So it's going to be an annoying ass wall on UU. Definitely going to be good there. Crocodile losing pursuit sucks, but um, against close combat, and it still has all of its old tricks besides pursuit, like intimidate, knock off, earthquake, you know, bulk up sets from a scarf still, and ban still. So yeah, it just might be able to make use of more coverage like close combat and stone edge instead of pursuit. Um, and last in B tier is Pytoad and Kindra, you know, just rain filler characters, secondary kind of characters. And yeah, C tier, it just comprises a Pokemon I think will probably be RU, maybe good in NU, um, but not super standouts and probably not a viable in OU at all. Might see some UU viability. Dredigon, just a great versatile dragon type, but it's kind of stuck at like the Jack of All Trades, Master of None, and on top of that, it's really slow for mono dragon type, so. It's limited, but decent. Zoroark has a nice niche, and people are always attracted to using it because of its ability, but it's still super frail and doesn't have the sheer, like, killing power that you'd like it to have. It needs to get a nasty blood up, but sometimes it can buy the free turn, but not always. Illusion can only go so far. Sometimes it's kind of obvious or, like, I don't know how to put it, telegraphed if you're, like, an experienced enough player. So, yeah, um, Dragology, ton of niche. It can absorb toxic spikes, set toxic spikes, and just be a nuke with adaptability, so... That might carve out a niche in a non blissey infested UU, but with Blissey, yeah, I'm a bit less sure. But it should be seen in RU, it should be decent, even without Hidden Power Fire, it's still a wrecking ball. It has coverage like Focus Blast, and even Scald on top of the stabs to hit things if need be without Hidden Power Fire. So, yeah, um, Lycanroc, I don't know what form it is, but Lycanroc's always like a kind of decent lower tier Pokemon. It hits hard, it has a lot of coverage, I think it even gained more this generation. And overall, I just think it's pretty cool. Like Psychic Fangs, is, for example, and the ability, so yeah, Assault Rock, etc. It's definitely decent, but not, like, amazing. And Polyrath, it gets close combat, and probably a couple other things, but I have to think about it. So it might be, like, a Swift Swim user. But I don't think it's going to see much usage in OU, even if it's a belly drummer, his zoom rolls just going to be better. And ultimately, I just think it's going to be okay. Probably, like, RU, maybe NU, yeah. And the last eight Pokemon, Tauros, Exploud, Kangaskhan, Exeggutor, and D-Rank are all going to be, like, okay in NU. Probably viable there. Maybe see some RU, but probably not IU by usage. Like, not going to see, like, the 4% threshold there. Probably just going to be, like, mainly NU Pokemon. That'll be good there. Maybe Xavier will drop the PU. And same with Kangaskhan. We'll have to wait and see. I can see X-Blood being RU, though. Above Tauros, honestly. Um, yeah, we'll put it there. That's fair. Um, and the last four are just kind of bottom dwellers. Nothing super special. Nothing too great. Probably just going to see Luxray and maybe Golduck and PU or even ZU. And the last two are just the worst of the worst fully evolved Pokemon. Not going to matter at all. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. We got uh, 23 minutes of nice analysis here, so be sure to like, comment, subscribe. And if you want to see more stuff like this, more tier lists, then let me know in the comments. Have a great day, guys. Peace. Hyper for DLC for sure.